Welcome to the deep dive. So you're here because you want to get up to speed uh, quickly and thoroughly on running large language models locally. Right. And today we're really going to try and cut through the noise, drill down on two, well, two pretty popular platforms doing this, a Llama and LM Studio. Exactly. We've done the homework, looked at the details, and our mission here really is to pull out the core differences, what makes them tick. So you can figure out which one might actually fit your needs better. That's the goal. Understanding the key distinctions. Okay, let's uh, let's jump straight into a llama then. The first thing that kind of jumps out is this focus on simplicity, right? And interacting through the command line. Yeah. It really feels geared towards developers or, you know, anyone who's comfortable living in that text-based world. That's spot on. The emphasis with a llama, it's definitely that lean command line interface. Mm -hmm. It's um it's built for people who value efficiency, maybe precise control. Mm -hmm. But it's worth saying, while the core is CLI, there's actually a growing ecosystem around it. People are building GAs, like Open Web UI. Oh, interesting. So you're not totally locked into the terminal if you don't want to be eventually. Not necessarily, no. There are options appearing. But the heart of it's still the command line. Okay. So if the terminal window isn't really your, uh, your happy place, that might sound a bit intimidating. But for those who are comfortable there, What's the payoff like when it comes to actually managing the models themselves? Well, the process for handling models, it's actually remarkably streamlined. Downloading them, updating them. Often it's like literally a single command. Just one command. Yeah, this one command pull functionality they mention. Yeah. It really simplifies grabbing the models you need. It's like telling your computer, hey, go fetch this specific model and boom, it does it. Okay, that sounds pretty efficient. What about um, access and cost? Is a llama something you have to pay for? Uh, no, our understanding is that Alama itself, the code, the website, it's all open source. Okay. Which means it's free to use, free to modify, even for commercial stuff, not just personal projects. That's a pretty big plus for a lot of people. Right. A significant benefit. So, okay, let, let's try and summarize the advantages for Alama. Why would someone lean that way? What are the key points? Well, efficiency is a big one. Because it's so focused on the command line, it tends to be pretty light on system resources. It doesn't hog your machine. Exactly. You might be able to run multiple models without things grinding to a halt, which is nice. And plus, that CLI and also its API, which is basically how other programs can talk to Alana, that gives you a lot of room for customization. Ah, so you can script it, integrate it. Precisely. You can build it into your own workflows, your own tools. Much more flexible in that sense. Okay. So the ideal Alana user. It sounds like the developer may be a power user, someone who actually likes that direct hands-on control and isn't scared off by typing commands. Yeah. They want something fast, lean, adaptable. Does that kind of paint the right picture? Absolutely. That nails it, I think. Now, should we pivot? Let's look at LM Studio. Yeah, let's do that. The contrast seems pretty immediate here, doesn't it? It really does. Mm -hmm. The big thing with LM Studio is its focus on a user-friendly uh, graphical interface. A GUI. Right. Buttons and menus instead of a blinking cursor. Exactly. It's clearly designed to be way more inviting, more accessible, really, to a much broader audience. You don't need that command line background. Yeah, it feels like they're actively trying to remove that intimidation factor, especially for people who might be brand new to running LLMs on their own machines. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. The sources we looked at consistently highlight that GUI. And it also includes... Uh, a pretty intuitive chat interface. Mm -hmm. So talking to the models feels quite familiar, almost like using ChatGPT online, but it's all running locally. Okay. Now, model management. We heard Alama is simple, one command. How does LM Studio handle finding models, downloading them, running them? Is it similar? Uh, not really, no. It's quite different. LM Studio has this built-in model explorer. A model explorer. Yeah, think of it like an app store, but just for LLMs. Mm -hmm. You can browse what's available, read descriptions, see download counts, and then just click a button to download the model directly within the app. Ah, okay. And then you can load it up and run it, all without ever needing to, you know, open a terminal window. That sounds significantly easier for, well, for many people, I imagine. It definitely lowers the barrier to entry. Okay. What about the cost for LM Studio? Alama's open source, free for all. What's the story here? So the information we have is that LM Studio is free, but only for personal use. Uh, okay. Personal use is fine. Right. If you want to use it for commercial purposes, for business, you need to get a license. That's a key difference compared to Olama's open source approach. Worth keeping in mind. Definitely. So boiling it down, what are the big selling points for LM Studio? Why pick this one? Ease of use is probably number one. Getting started is just much simpler with that GUI. Less friction. Way less friction, especially for newcomers. 
It also supports a really wide range of models and those built-in tools, the Explorer, the chat, that just make the whole process feel more integrated and, well, smoother. Right. So the picture of the ideal LM Studio user is quite different from the Awama one. It's maybe the beginner, the general user, someone who just prefers a visual point and click kind of experience. Exactly. They want something that, you know, just works nicely right out of the box without much fuss. That's a good way to put it. So now we've kind of got a feel for each one individually. Maybe we should draw some really direct comparisons. Mm. Put them side by side on the key stuff. Yeah, good idea. Let's crystallize those differences. The most obvious one, let's start there, the interface. We've talked around it, but it really is the core distinction, isn't it? Absolutely. Alama is fundamentally command line. LM Studio is fundamentally graphical. Your comfort zone here is probably the biggest deciding factor right off the bat. It often is, yeah. If you like the terminal, the precision, the efficiency, Alama feels natural. If you prefer clicking, menus, visual feedback, LM Studio is going to be more appealing. Simple as that for many. And link to that is ease of use or maybe the learning curve. If someone's totally new to this whole local LLM thing, which one generally gets the nod for being easier to just pick up and start using? Uh, the consensus definitely seems to point towards LLM Studio as being more beginner friendly. Makes sense. That visual interface, the integrated tools. Yeah. It just makes getting started much smoother, less intimidating. You can be exploring models and chatting much faster. But flip side, what if you want to get under the hood? Customize things, integrate it deeply into other systems you're building, where does the advantage lie then? Ah, that's where Alama comes back strong. Mm -hmm. That command line interface, and crucially, it's API that offers much greater flexibility, more granular control. Right. If you want to fine tune configurations, automate things with scripts, build custom integrations with other software, Alama gives you the hooks to do that. LM Studio feels more like a self contained application, you know? Yeah, less designed for that kind of deep integration, maybe. Okay. And one last comparison point features. Just straight out of the box, what do you get? Well, in terms of built-in bells and whistles, LM Studio generally offers a more comprehensive package immediately. Like the chat and the explorer you mentioned. Exactly. The integrated chat, the model explorer, and it also has compatibility with the OpenAI API format for some things, which can be useful. It just feels like it has more stuff readily available right after you install it. Whereas Alama is more minimalist at its core. Yeah, it relies on that powerful CLI and API for you to build interactions mm -hmm. rather than having them all prepackaged in a GUI. Okay, I think we've laid out the characteristics pretty clearly. So now the crucial bit, helping you, the listener, decide which platform aligns best with your needs. Let's try and give some clear pointers. Okay. So if you're someone who, you know, feels comfortable, maybe even prefers working in a terminal. The command line is your friend. Right. If you value a lightweight, efficient system that won't eat all your RAM, and you like the idea of using commands to manage things, then Alama is probably going to be a really good fit. That simplicity, that potential for scripting and customization will appeal. Exactly. It fits that developer or power user mindset. Okay. On the other hand, if the thought of a GY, a graphical interface, just sounds easier, more comfortable. A sigh of relief, maybe. Yeah. If you value a really straightforward, intuitive experience, clicking around, browsing models visually, chatting easily. Yeah. And you appreciate having those built-in features like the chat and the model discovery tool right there. Then LM Studio is probably the one you want to check out first. Yeah. It really is designed for that smoother onboarding and immediate usability. So it really boils down to your technical comfort level and what you prioritize, doesn't it? Interface preference, need for customization versus out-of-the-box features. Precisely. Your workflow, how you like to work with technology, will guide you here. Right. So in this deep dive, we've really tried to pull apart Alama and LM Studio, focusing on those key architectural differences, the user experience differences. Yeah, drawing on what we know about them to give you the facts you need to make a good choice for your journey into local LLMs. And maybe the final thought, the thing to mull over as you venture into this uh, pretty exciting space of local AI yeah. is just to really consider how your background, your technical comfort, and what you actually want to do, that desired level of control versus ease, matches up with what each platform offers. That's a great point. And honestly, maybe the best way to really know oh. might be worth it. Mm -hmm. Spend a little time with each. Yeah. See which environment, which workflow just clicks better for you in your own exploration. You might be surprised.